Just a quick poll, who's actually read a comic book in the last year or so? If you've read anything out of DC, you've definitely noticed ads like this, or this, or even this. That's because DC is insistent upon an artificially dark tone. DC's become so focused on telling superficially dark storylines that they will contort and warp any character to fit their needs. You can take a character like Superman, the original paragon of what it meant to be a superhero. Now you can make him evil. You can see this in stories like Injustice, where he's the main villain. Or there is a warped version of him, such as in Superboy Prime, who brutally murders many members of the Titans. You have characters as outrageously popular as Batman, and now DC is forced to make them evil. We're not just going to make Batman evil, though. Let's have him evil with a twist. Let's make him Flash, Cyborg, Green Lantern, Aquaman, and then uh, Wonder Woman. And then let's also make him Doomsday and the Joker. But he's still Batman. But he's also evil. But he also has the powers of those other characters. Confused yet? I don't blame you. You know what, just for flavor, let's have the evil Joker Batman dominate your entire line of comics for like a year until people get really sick of him. Make him have killed literally everyone in his storylines. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone. The Spectre, the Monitor, doesn't matter. They're all dead. We gotta make sure this evil Batman Joker is like the coolest thing ever. He's the best, he's super evil, and he's so edgy. Like, just look at what he wears. He's so edgy. He's so important, guys. Uh, what else is dark and edgy? Oh, uh, people love Watchmen. Let's bring all of them back and then totally forget the point of what made that story good and the reasons for those characters existing. And just for fun, let's get the evil Joker Batman to put his brain in Dr. Manhattan's body. Oh, it's not actually Dr. Manhattan's body. It's just a different version of Bruce Wayne who happened to have everything that happened to Dr. Manhattan happen to him. Uh, but yeah, let's put evil Joker Batman's brain in the body of evil Dr. Manhattan Bruce Wayne's body so that we can have an evil Joker Batman with Dr. Manhattan powers. Confused? Don't worry, that's not going away because that guy's going to fight Wonder Woman with a chainsaw. We're very serious over here at DC, guys. We're very dark and important and edgy. You have to believe us. Everything I've just said is absolutely real, by the way. All of this is needless spectacle. In part six of Aristotle's Poetics, he claims that tragedy is divided into six parts. And of all of them, spectacle is the least artistic and connected to the least art of poetry. All of DC's major events since Rebirth began have been sheer bloody-minded spectacle. Suicide Squad vs. Justice League, Dark Knight's Metal, Doomsday Clock, and of course, Heroes in Crisis, but I'm, I'm gonna talk about that one a little bit later. DC constantly tries to distract its readers with useless Elseworld stories or pointlessly dark events. What if Blackest Night happened, but all of our heroes died? What if the Waynes were never killed and Green Lantern blew his own brains out? What if Batman carried Joker's head around in a jar in the post-apocalypse? What if everyone died and became a zombie? Twice. What if every character you ever liked was dead? Why is the only way DC knows how to set tension to kill off a character? Like, I don't really understand it. I don't care if the death sticks or gets undone. Why is the only thing that they know how to do kill someone? We have a complicated continuity, they say. And now we have two Supermans. Well, what do we do? Well, you'll have to kill one like you did in Final Days of Superman. Well, we need to establish the Dark Knights are serious, what do we do? Well, how about you kill Nightmaster, like you did in Dark Knights in issue number three? Well, we need to explain where the Joker Batman's Robins went, right? So, what do we do? Well, you could kill all of them, like you did in Dark Knights, the Batman who laughs. We need to show how dangerous Sanctuary is for so many beloved characters. Uh, what do we do? Uh, well, what you did was kill all of them. Do you see a pattern here? Anytime DC gets put in anything resembling a corner or anything resembling a problem, they just kill off a character and run away with your money. Uh, it's needless, it's pointlessly dark, and it really robs the company of stories that they could be telling. And not a single character gets out of this unscathed. Most of them come back, but some of them don't. I'm not kidding. This affects just about every single person in the DC universe. Even Batman. I'm going to be honest with all of you. I don't really understand the appeal of modern Batman stories. 
Perhaps this was encouraged by the success of Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy, but DC Comics has been pushing Batman to the forefront of nearly every single major event and release. I understand that he's a tentpole character of the DC Universe, but I think his role within said universe has gone underappreciated and somehow overvalued. He's supposed to be the mind behind the League, a character who can't afford to take it easy because he has to work so hard just to stay level with the other gifted members of the team. The problem comes when Batman is written like a superhuman, where he plays 40 chess and can outbox Solomon Grundy like he did in Batman issue 2. You need to fight 100 people at once? Don't worry. He's got you, like he does in Batman number 12. Need to fight Superman? Don't worry, he has a battle suit on the fucking moon. Need to unlock an ancient gateway to a dark multiverse that no one's even sure he actually exists? Don't worry, he's gonna do that with baby Darkseid? I... wait, what? Doesn't matter, Darkseid shoots you with his Omega Beams, blasts it to kill anyone who's hit by it. You'll be fine, it'll just send you back in time instead of, you know, killing you. Despite leaving behind a skeleton. Side note, is that Bruce's skeleton or someone else's skeleton? If it is Bruce's skeleton, does that mean he inhabit the body of a caveman when he got sent back in time? I'm sure the answers are there, but it's just such a stupid premise, I'm not even going to bother. Alright, here's one. Here's a problem that could happen to Batman. What if for whatever reason Batman can't handle something on his own? Well, who does he call? Well, just about anyone. Volume 1 of Rebirth, Batman calls in the Justice League to solve his problems. Which makes you scratch your head at why he doesn't call them AGAIN when Bane takes over 80 issues later. Or maybe he can call the Bat Family, which has like 20 members. Or maybe he'll call the Outsiders, maybe he'll call the new JLA, or the new Justice League, or Swamp Thing, or Booster Gold, or the Spectre, who's literally the Wrath of Gods. So you'd think any of them can handle this problem, right? Uh, apparently not. I know why these characters are in his books, guys. Because DC wants to have a larger shared universe. The problem is when things get really hard for Batman, he always has to do it himself. Until he doesn't. Dang it, man. Even when fighting the evil Joker Batman at the end of Dark Knight's Metal, he still calls for help. Not from Superman or Robin or Wonder Woman, but he calls the Joker. My favorite Batman stories are the one where his back is up against a wall, legitimately where he's in a situation only he can solve. But DC is so insistent that their universe would crumble without him that they design increasingly complex ways for Batman to be isolated so that he can't or won't call for help from any of the 50,000 people who could help him any other day. This is why Court of Owls was a good story, because it was simple in its premise. It was personal and it didn't need to be epic to be engaging. What ended up killing the new 52 run was all that spectacle that kept overruling the plot. Why does Joker cut off his own face? I don't know, but it's creepy, right? Why is there an evil Bat God ruling over the Dark Multiverse? I don't know, but it's scary, right? How can Joker Batman Jokerize six random heroes, including a Kryptonian and an Amazon? I'm, I'm just sick of these characters, man. They just leave me feeling so... so empty afterwards. This is the real reason I made this video. Everything up to this point was annoying, but I could overlook it. The reason I'm so upset with DC is because I really loved it at one point in time. When I first really started getting into comics, my first two series were Green Lanterns and Green Arrow. The stories were surprisingly deep, involved more in character than actual worldwide stakes. Green Lanterns focused on the chronic anxiety and depression of a superhero who needed to use willpower to even fight. Her power ring chose her because she, all by herself, had the greatest capacity to overcome great fear. Can you believe that? A Green Lantern whose strength isn't flying jets or jumping into burning buildings but just getting out of bed? That's kind of heavy, but also, like, really beautiful. Green Arrow was about stripping Oliver Queen to his bare essentials. Almost immediately, he was robbed of his great fortune and spent the rest of his series working hard to protect people in his city on an intimate scale. There were high-flying action set pieces throughout both of these series, to be sure, but neither of them ever really lost track of what they were about, which was character. Then came my introduction to Titans, and by far and away my favorite comic book character of all time, Roy Harper. He's gone by a few names over the years, Speedy, Red Arrow, but currently his hero name is Arsenal. Before the reboot, he had a very hard life. He was the victim of the 80s way of comic book storytelling, that being make everything darker, so naturally he became a drug addict. Green Arrow disowned him, and he fell on hard times, but 
piece by piece, he started to build himself back up. He had an off and on again relationship with this assassin named Cheshire, and in time the two of them had a daughter named Leanne. In another series of poor writing choices, Roy was crippled and his daughter was the victim of a massacre. He fell back to drugs, and who else but Batman decided to punch him out of it, exclaiming that he was his friend. While I was editing this, I realized the beauty of this image. It encapsulates every frustration I have with DC. The brutally dark storytelling, the extreme loss writers need to give characters to motivate them, and of course, Batman, acting as if he's the moral spine of the DC universe and that his actions of barbarism are anything other than beating up another drug-addled street thug with a gimmick. This image highlights everything I hate about DC taking a truly incredible character and punishing him for daring to hog Batman's screen time, even in a miniseries about Arsenal. All this to say that before the reboot, Roy was the victim of just about every terrible thing to happen to someone in a comic book. But then something incredible happened over the years. He kept getting back up. After the New 52, he and the Red Hood were in a team known as the Outlaws, and although the book wasn't so great, Roy was forming strong relationships with other characters that DC at large had pretty much forgotten about. Once again, fuck you, Batman. As Rebirth began, Roy was a member of the Titans again, and it was revealed that many elements of his backstory were preserved. He was still recovering from his addictions and was making excellent strides. His team was supporting him, and he'd even used his experience to help in cases having to do with rehabilitation and redemption. He would also guest star in Green Arrow books to help Native Americans defend against brutality having to do with oil pipelines, and even began patching things up with Oliver. The end of the Titans book saw him go off on his own, against the Justice League's orders, to stop a plot he knew was happening. The whole league and even members of his own team told him to wait, but he knew that if he did, a lot of people would get hurt. He fought against everyone just to do the right thing, and hey look, he even fought Cheshire there too, that's kinda neat. In the end, his friends believed him, and together they saved the world. Again, it may have been the end of that run, but Roy and the Titans were heroes. Roy would show up again in the Red Hood's new series, trying to help his old friend Jason after a bad fight that nearly killed him, which was also Batman's fault. So maybe shooting him in the hand is revenge for getting kicked in the face. I don't know if Rise of Arsenal happened. I don't think it's kept in continuity, but I like to think that Roy has this, this odd sense of justice for shooting Batman in the hand there. I don't know, that, that might just be me. He nursed Jason back to health in time for a quick investigation at a local hospital. By the end of the issue, you learn that Roy is going back to rehab to help deal with his own trauma. Not only that, he's going to Sanctuary, a facility created by superheroes to help deal with the stresses of their line of work. Roy even offers to take Jason with him, but he declines and the two go their separate ways after a brotherly hug. It's a nice issue. You can check it out. It's Red Hood Annual Number 2. Too bad Roy dies in his very next appearance. I'ma be blunt with y'all. Fuck this event. No, I'm serious. Fuck this event. It does literally everything wrong. It damns mental health facilities. It makes trauma a fucking joke. It mischaracterizes countless heroes and villains in pointless testimonials that don't amount to anything beyond padding, and it viciously kills dozens of characters in the first issue for little more than shock. No, I'm not kidding. What was billed as a murder mystery kills off many side characters in a mystery without any solution that the audience could have ever solved, including pieces of evidence that don't have a resolution. The basic plot, for those who don't know, is that the Justice League has set up an anonymous mental health facility so that heroes can recharge from the stresses of hero work. The Sanctuary, as it's called, is attacked from within, and everyone there dies, save Booster Gold and Harley Quinn, each thinking the other one did it. Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman investigate and are just... the fucking worst throughout all of it. Superman most of all, who allows Lois Lane to publish information about Sanctuary that someone leaked. Given that all the records of the private testimonies are confidential and allegedly erased right after they're recorded, it's likely to assume that whoever leaked this info was involved in the murders. But nope, Superman lets his wife release private medical confessions to the world at large. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Booster Gold and Harley Quinn spend nine issues investigating, or rather they think they're investigating, when really they just fuck around and try to beat up the Flash and each other because, again, each thinks the other one did it. <laughs> At a point, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman just kind of stop looking for the killer after Harley Quinn escapes all three of them at the same time. I'm going to just hold on that for a second. Harley Quinn escapes Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman at the same time. 
eventually the story finally starts in like issue eight of nine and harley and booster figure out that wally west the kid flash and a member of the titans was responsible apparently he felt that sanctuary was made up just for him and when he realized that everyone else there actually had trauma and reasons to be there he snapped killing everyone with the speed force that's right the real killer was a hero who just emotionally snapped, killing dozens in his moment of weakness. Okay, let's start with the flaws and just the plot of this story. What the fuck? Why would DC allow this? I understand having a villain do this kind of thing, but you had Wally goddamn West kill countless heroes? For what? What was the point? To show heroes at their breaking point? To be dark and more mature? Newsflash, death in stories isn't mature. Heroes acting villainous isn't mature. Including a mental health facility and killing everyone who goes there is the fucking opposite of mature. You know what you've done, right? You know what message you're sending to every little boy and girl who picks up your comics who suffers from mental illness? You're showing them that getting help will get them killed. That they are the problem, and not even the Justice League can help. They're just crazy after all, and will hurt even their closest friends. You're telling them that they deserve to be locked away, just like Wally was at the end of this event. Congratulations DC, you're villainizing children with mental health issues. The same people who grabbed Green Lanterns and were inspired to overcome their fears are now being told that help will never come for them. You had your chance to benefit the world, to show how hopeful your heroes could be, but no. You just couldn't be happy, just this once. When your company, your industry, and the whole fucking world just needed some joy, you slapped away the opportunity to make another cheap event about heroes failing. You burnt Roy Harper and Wally West on the pyre of dark storytelling and patted yourselves on the back while you did it. As a side note, one of the dozens of testimonials that's used as padding for this event has Red Hood. It's all for a joke, by the way, about how the Robins are trying to identify each other from one another. How they're trying to stand out from the crowd. Despite the fact that Jason told Roy he wouldn't go. And so he he, he, he wouldn't be there. He, he just He just wouldn't be there. The last comics I chose to read were Red Hood and the Outlaws 27 and Green Arrow 45. Let's start in Red Hood, where Jason's calling Roy Harper to check in on the investigation. Roy has a funny answering machine message, and Jason hardly thinks anything of it. Later, Bruce Wayne finds Jason to tell him that Roy died. Jason, in a moment of calm, thinks that many people will be out for revenge and that he shouldn't get involved, and Bruce agrees. Jason leaves a message for Roy and then deletes him from his contacts. In Green Arrow 45, a funeral service is held for Roy Harper. Members of the Justice League are in attendance, but they're in their civilian clothes as to not arouse suspicion. Oliver Queen, the Green Arrow, is livid. He's upset at himself for always letting his protege down, and even threatens the League with a MacGuffin from a previous event, said to have power enough to thwart the League. However, he's immediately stopped by Martian Manhunter psychically, who informs him that this isn't the time. As a side note, this just shows the Justice League's absolute hypocrisy and showcases how they placate Oliver Queen with a shiny box and won't even let him use it. Oliver, by the way, is one of the very few characters within the League who calls them out on their bullshit. All the same, Oliver says a few words and then meets with a woman at the service. She comments on how the burial site is where Roy decided to get clean. With that, she pulls out her AA coin and tells Oliver about how Roy got her through some really hard times, sponsoring her. The scene always makes me emotional whenever I so much as talk about it. These superhero stories are about essentially saving people. They're supposed to be about being more than yourself and being good in spite of the world around you. They're about being better humans, and I don't think I've ever seen a more human superhero than Roy Harper. I'm done reading comic books. There are so many good authors out there, so many amazing artists, so much potential, but I just can't bear to keep throwing my money at an industry that's allowed to so thoroughly reject happiness. Everything has to be sad or tragic or dark. Everything has to subvert my expectations or shake up the status quo or reimagine classic origin stories. What if Krypton was the victim of a genocide? What if Batwoman shot Clayface in the head? What if Wally West had Dr. Manhattan's powers now? I... I just can't take it anymore. I don't care that Jessica Cruz, the anxiety Green Lantern, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Darkseid himself. 
I don't care that Wally West is essentially a good guy again. I don't care that the JSA is back or that Joker Batman is gone or even that Roy Harper will probably come back in the future. I just don't have it in me to care so much about characters that DC doesn't seem to care for. There's a saying at Marvel that Spider-Man wins the battle but loses the war. That's to say that to write superheroes, they can win specific fights, but they always need to lose something to keep the reader invested, to have them engaged enough to read the next issue. I just don't want to hurt anymore. So much of this world is bad right now and I just can't do it. I can't keep getting attached and invested in these characters that DC feels so comfortable wounding and maiming and massacring and just fucking torturing forever. Why, if these stories are supposed to be uplifting, why is everything so dark? Final Crisis, Blackest Night, Doomsday Clock, Dark Knight's Metal, Deceased, You're the Villains, Heroes in Crisis. Why are... Why are the stakes always so damn high? I'm tired of seeing the same hopeless situations affect the same tired characters without any meaningful change. I guess I'm disillusioned to the fact that the industry doesn't change. Writers will keep oversaturating the market with so-called dark stories, they'll keep killing characters that are actually heroic, and then they'll bring them back and do it all over again like nothing ever happened. And I just don't want to do it anymore. Alright, that's the official end of the video, and if you've made it to the end, thank you. I don't usually make videos like this, but I wanted to talk about this for over a year now. I still plan on making superhero content on my channel, and rest assured that includes the next part of the Young Justice proposal, so stay tuned. And if you want to support the channel, please subscribe. I make a variety of content from AMVs to gameplay to video essays like this one here. If you really want to support me, you can subscribe to my Patreon and see your name at the end of my videos, like right here. And maybe even choose what I make for my next video. Uh, until then, I hope you all have a very good day.